Are you prepared for precision medicine? A major driver of precision medicine is pharmacogenomics, and understanding pharmacogenomics can make a huge impact in the way you can decrease adverse drug events, as well as improve the overall outcomes of your patients. We started Cygenics for one simple reason, to help people live better, healthier, and longer lives. We bring the science of genetic testing and a team of health and technology professionals to tackle some of the most pressing issues in health and wellness facing our country today. Our team has built a unique set of proprietary programs to help minimize high-risk individuals with medication management, insights as a solution, as well as educational programs for both professionals as well as the general public. On behalf of the whole team at Cygenics, thank you for your interest in this program, and let's get started. Following this presentation, you should be able to define personalized and precision medicine, describe the basic principles and concepts of pharmacogenomics, explain what a genetic variant is and how it can influence drug metabolism, understand the clinical relevance, benefits, and limitations of pharmacogenomics testing, and discuss clinical implementations of pharmacogenomics. In the majority of current and past medical practices, the standard practice model has been to make a diagnosis, prescribe a medication, and hope that the patient will respond and improve. Unfortunately, this was done without taking into consideration a number of very important factors, namely the ethnicity of the individual, the age of the individual, their gender, diet, lifestyle, and most certainly the patient's genetic information. The one-size-fits-all model has been proven time and time again that it just doesn't work. And looking at this chart, we can see this with the relative efficacy and inefficiency of drug to disease correlation in the one size fits all model of medical practice. It's not well known, but approximately 10% of all new drugs delivered to the market today are withdrawn shortly after they're launched due to adverse drug events. But now with the use of pharmacogenomics, we are now able to target our patients with medication selection to deliver higher response rates with fewer side effects. As a result of the current and past standards of care, we have seen a rise in adverse drug events. With more than 90% of the population having at least one genetic variant, there's no wonder why adverse drug events has killed over 200,000 people each year in the U.S. alone, becoming the fourth leading cause of death in the U.S. and sixth in the world costing over $180 billion per year to treat the effects of adverse drug events. But the most troubling statistic is that greater than 74% of these deaths and adverse drug events could have been prevented if only pharmacogenomics was established as a standard of medical practice today. Factors affecting drug response are many, including diet, environment, ethnicity, disease state, gender, drug interactions, age, and genetics based on the drug metabolism. Let's take a look at how personalized or precision medicine impacts pharmacogenomics. Now there's two ways that you might hear the name of this test being used. For instance, pharmacogenetics. Pharmacogenetics is the study of the variations in a gene or related genes in drug response. A variation simply stated indicates how a gene is expressed or how it has changed. Pharmacogenetics refers to how the variation in one single gene can influence the response to a single drug. And pharmacogenomics is how the genetic information is used to guide the practitioner in their choice of a drug and dosage on an individual basis. And in broader terms, it's the study of how all genes can influence responses to drugs. Taking a deeper dive into what pharmacogenomics is, you will see how your DNA affects the way an individual responds to a drug and why it's so important for you as a practitioner to start using this test in your practice. Pharmacogenomics provides information about how you may react to a prescription and a dosage. It can help you to select the right drug in the right dosage for the right person the first time. And it eliminates the trial and error approach to prescribing. The goal of pharmacogenomics is many. First and foremost, it can prevent adverse drug events by reducing hospitalizations, emergency room visits, maximizing drug efficacy, minimizing drug toxicity, predicting patient response to intervention, as well as to aid in new drug development. Drugs metabolize at different rates in different individuals based upon their genetics. 
but the current model looks at a patient with the same diagnosis and prescribes the same prescription, expecting the same results. This is the trial and error approach, which we know is not effective, it's not safe, and very inefficient model to follow. The reason being is because every person is different and they may respond differently to the same drug or the same dosage. There are several types of responders, which is reported in your pharmacogenomics test results. And there are several different ways your patients may respond to a drug that you prescribe. The first is the normal, also known as the extensive metabolizer. This is the patient who can receive a prescription based upon the recommendations put out by the drug manufacturer. Next is the poor or intermediate metabolizer. This individual metabolizes slower than normal and because of this can experience a toxic response with the prescribed medication and dosage. This person will require that you start at a lower dosage. Then comes the rapid or ultra rapid metabolizer. This individual will go through a standard dosage in record time. A once every 12 hour dosage may be metabolized as quickly as within two hours, leading to an ineffective dosage, ultimately requiring a higher dosage to begin with. And then you have the non-responder. This patient will require a different medication altogether. So as you can see, not everybody metabolizes at the same rate. And some may become toxic, leading to adverse drug events, and still others may see no effect at all. There is an impact study completed at the University of Utah in 2015. The study was performed on patients with multiple medications, and the results following pharmacogenomics testing and the modification of the patient's medications revealed a significant change to their outcomes, including reduced hospitalization readmission by 39%, reduced emergency visits by 79%, a reduced mortality rate by 85%, and an overall savings of an average of $4,382 per patient per year. To better understand pharmacogenomics, you need to understand what a genetic sequence is and how a sequence in genetics can change and alter the expression of that gene and the DNA. The most common change in a DNA sequence is called a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP for short. A SNP is a single base pair change in the DNA sequence. And a base pair consists of an adenine and thymine paired together, a cysteine and a guanine paired together. And the binding of these base pairs form a rung of the DNA ladder. There are 3.2 billion base pairs in every single cell in the human body. And a SNP occurs when a single nucleotide in the genome sequence is altered. Each set of three nucleotides in a gene correspond to a particular amino acid. When your body reads the sequence of a gene, the corresponding amino acids are assembled into a chain to make a protein. These differences are known as variants. And variants can be large or small involving many nucleotides or just one. Because each set of three nucleotides corresponds to a different amino acid, a single nucleotide variation can change the amino acid that is added to the protein chain. This can result in a protein that doesn't function as well, or one that may not function at all. If the altered protein is involved in an important process in the body, then sometimes even a single nucleotide change can cause disease. Now, actionable variances are very common in the general public. So based upon these variants that might show up in your patient's report, the changes that we can actually act on in practice are very common. We have a number of studies here that demonstrate the frequencies of actionable variants. To begin with, let's take a look at the first study from the 10,000 predict cohort. It was found that 91% of the genotype patients and 96% of African-American patients had an actionable variant. The 5,000 sequence cohort in eMERGE PGX study revealed actionable variants in 96.19% of the participants. 1,013 subjects in the right protocol study presented with an actionable variant, and 99% of veterans that participated in the Veteran Health Administration in a cross-sectional study revealed an actionable variant. So as you're now starting to understand, there's a significant number of individuals who carry genetic variants. And it's important to be able to detect these variants and to be able to predict individuals who will respond to drug therapy and not develop any adverse drug reactions from it. 
This is where pharmacogenomics has the most promise. The Human Genome Project was completed in 2003 by sequencing 90% of the human genome. This ushered in the new era of medicine called personalized medicine. Personalized medicine was first coined in 1999 using genetic profiles to guide decisions regarding prevention, disease, diagnosis, and treatment. The Precision Medicine Initiative was established by the administration in 2015, which stated that treatment and prevention must consider variability of genes, the environment in which the patient resides, their lifestyle, the ethnicity of the patient, as well as just the uniqueness of the individual. A great example of precision medicine, which has become the gold standard in treatment, is blood transfusion. It was first successfully completed in 1818 by Dr. James Blundell. However, it wasn't until Dr. Carl Landsteiner discovers the human blood groups A, B, O, and the last AB in 1902, which improved by cross-matching and the future standard of care was established. And then it wasn't until 1958 that the AABB published its first edition of the standards for blood transfusion, which has led to this statement, the right blood for the right patient at the right time in the right place. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, pharmacogenomics has established a statement, which is, the right drug in the right dosage for the right person the first time. Human genetics and genomics research has led its promise in a new paradigm for healthcare, one that uses molecular profiling to identify human genetic variants implicated in multifactorial health risks. It has shifted the way medicine is practiced today from the one size fits all. It detects disease at an earlier stage when it's easier to treat effectively it enables the selection of optimal therapy, thereby reducing adverse drug reactions, increasing patient compliance, improving the selection of targets for drug discovery, and reducing the time, cost, and failure rate of clinical trials, shifting the emphasis in medicine from reaction to prevention and reducing the overall cost of healthcare. Pharmacogenomics is the combining of genetics and pharmacology and because of that, we take into consideration the pharmacokinetics as well as the pharmacodynamics of the drug. Pharmacokinetics is how your body affects a drug. Pharmacodynamics is how the drug affects the body. In addition, we then have to look at the proteins that are involved in this process, as well as the genes that are responsible for coding of these proteins, which is specifically what the cytochrome P450 system and its enzymes are responsible for. The majority of drug metabolism is achieved through the liver through the cytochrome P450 system, also abbreviated as CYP or CYP. And to understand this further, pharmacogenomics has its own nomenclature known as the star allele system. Let's take a look at what you might see when you're going through your pharmacogenomics report and what you'll see on the upcoming slides. Let's start by looking at a typical genetic variant the CYP2C19 star 2, or genetic variant 681GA. Now, the CYP or CYP refers to the superfamily. The number 2 is the family. C is the subfamily. 19 is the isomer or the actual enzyme. And the star 2 is the variant of interest. So, the genetic variant 681GA is seen at the 681st base pair where the G or guanine has changed to the A or adenine. Let's take a look at the CYP enzyme and drug metabolism. And for this demonstration, we're gonna look at how the liver functions in the metabolism of the drug clopidogrel. Drug metabolism is also achieved through the liver, through phase one or phase two reactions or both. The most common phase one reaction is oxidation, which is catalyzed by the cytochrome P450 system. And if we can follow this process, you can see that it's a multi-phase process utilizing multiple genes and enzymes to convert it into its active form. The SIP system is essential for you as a practitioner to understand because the consequences of a drug-drug interaction or drug-gene interaction can be profound. Most drugs are metabolized in the liver, but there are several additional sites in which the drug metabolism occurs, such as the intestinal walls, the lungs, kidneys, and plasma. 
Although we have more than 60 SIP genes, six of them metabolize 90% of all drugs, with the two most significant enzymes being CYP2D6, CYP2C19, CYP23A4, and A5. Genetic variability, also known as polymorphism, in these enzymes may influence a patient's response to commonly prescribed drug classes, including beta blockers and antidepressants, just to name a few. Let's take a look at examples of enzymes and drugs on this chart. And you'll see that it shows four enzymes that we've already spoken about, as well as the percentage of drug metabolism, as well as the examples of various drugs that it metabolizes. But what is really important about everything we've discussed so far is that if you know your patient has a variant and where that variant is located, it is very likely that you can then predict how that individual will respond to a certain medication. The FDA has approved 1,200 plus drugs currently, and approximately 15% have PGX information in their labels. CPIC, or the Clinical Pharmacogenomics Implementation Consortium, is an international consortium which has created guidelines designed to help clinicians understand how available genetic test results should be used to optimize drug therapy, rather than whether the test should be ordered in the first place. Through their research and studies, they've categorized medications based upon the level of evidence linking genotypes to phenotypes, along with prescribing medications. So why is it so important to learn about genetics for your patients? Well, there's many reasons. First and foremost, you may be asked questions about genetics that your patients bring in. They may bring in a report that they pulled off the internet or from another physician. Hopefully, they will go to you because you've demonstrated to them that you're knowledgeable about genetics. This could be from information in your waiting room, articles that you've written, speeches that you've given, many different ways that you can present to your patients that you are now using genetics in your office. Genetic testing is becoming mainstream in medicine and is being taught in medical schools today as core curriculum. Now let's take a look at a pharmacogenomics report and what you can expect and how to read them. The first page is where you'll see a list of drugs that your patient is currently taking. Your patient's current medications will be listed as well as reported upon, even if they're not normally seen in the report. In this report, you can see that the patient is taking finasteride, levothyroxine, permethrin, as well as Zofran. If they're metabolized by one of the many genes that we test for, you will see the function of the medication based upon your patient's genes, along with any guidelines on prescribing. Next is the patient medication section. Here is where you'll see, once again, the patient's current medications, as well as whether they can metabolize that medication as prescribed, such as what we're seeing with finasteride, levothyroxine, and permethion, as they have a green check mark indicating that they are metabolizing these drugs just fine. You will also see that this patient has a red exclamation point next to their Zofran. In this case, the red exclamation point indicates that based upon your patient's genotype, there are guidelines for adjusting the dosage or selecting an alternative drug as this could result in an adverse drug event. If any of the drugs have a listed yellow triangle, it indicates that the drug potentially has reduced efficacy or increased toxicity where clinical monitoring is recommended. The next section provides a list of potentially impacted drugs, their metabolism, guidelines, along with clinical references. And as you can see on this particular section, Zofran is listed as one of those drugs. In the following section, you'll see the phenotype associated with the genotype. In this example, you can see that this patient has lost the function of one allele and one copy of the CYP2C19 protein exhibiting reduced 2C19 enzyme activity, along with a warning that any drug deactivated by CYP2C19 may result in that patient developing an elevated serum drug concentration, leading to potential adverse drug reactions. The next section will take you through the categories of drug specialties that we evaluate, starting with pain, psychotropic, neurology, cardiology, gastroenterology, endocrinology, and urology. 
And finally, we have the patient information card. This section should be cut out by the patient and put into their wallet and carried with them to any doctor's appointments or pharmacies. This will indicate to the prescribing physician or the pharmacist that there may be cautious areas that they need to look at before prescribing a medication. And let's take a look at a few clinical studies, starting with depression. This is a 48-year-old widow experiencing troubled sleeping, daytime exhaustion, consistent lower back pain, and has become socially withdrawn. The patient was prescribed two medications as well as counseling. Six weeks later, the patient stopped counseling, complained of dizziness, nausea, depression, and continued back pain. Her physician recommended a pharmacogenomics test. And when it was performed, the results showed that she was a poor metabolizer of the main drugs prescribed. The patient was then prescribed new medication based upon her genetics and how she metabolized them. And four weeks later, the patient was sleeping better, had decreased back pain, improved appetite, less dizziness, and returned to counseling. The next patient is a pain patient. 58-year-old female placed on disability six months ago due to an inability to work. She was prescribed three medications for pain along with physical therapy, and six weeks later, there was no relief in pain. She had gained weight and was also constipated. Her doctor recommended a pharmacogenomics test, which revealed that she was a poor metabolizer of all three prescribed drugs. She was then prescribed two new drugs based upon her genetic profile, and four weeks later, she indicated that her mood had improved, her overall joint pain and neuropathy had decreased, she had then returned to work even sooner than anticipated because of the pharmacogenomics test and the change in medication. This last case here is a cardiovascular case. This is a 60-year-old male with a history of high cholesterol since the age of 26. He had an increased risk for coronary artery disease and stroke, and his father died at age 72 following two heart attacks, with his first one being at 56. The patient had been placed on multiple statins over the years with no change in cholesterol levels, but he did have significant muscle aches, which is not unusual for those that cannot metabolize statin medications. It wasn't until just a couple of years ago that his cardiologist recommended a pharmacogenomics test. As a result, it was found that he was a non-metabolizer of all statin drugs. He also had a malfunctioning MTHFR enzyme, which led to elevated homocysteine levels. The patient was then put onto a new medication based on his genetic test. And within two months, the follow-up revealed a significant decrease in total cholesterol from 285 to 138. His HDL went up from 31 to 39. He had a drop in his LDL from 153 to 63 and a decrease in his heart disease stroke risk over 10 years, dropping from 24.2% to 9.1% and no muscle aches as a result of the new medication. This case is very important to me personally because this case is actually me. This is my health history and this is my father's health history. And when we found out that I was not able to metabolize statin medications and was put on a different medication and saw these changes, needless to say, I was beyond excited. So much so that I had to look at the report a number of times to make sure that it was mine. And not only that, my family was thrilled to see that there was a significant reduction in my risk of having a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years. Whereas my father, unfortunately, did not have this information. And had he did, maybe he'd still be around today. Let's turn our attention now to the drivers of pharmacogenomics and genetic testing in general, and what is causing clinical adoption to become the new standard of care in medication management and why so many major institutions like Mayo Clinic, Duke, Vanderbilt, Harvard, Stanford, are all incorporating genomics into their schools and medical education practices. The reason is simple. There is significant evidence of genetic association with numerous drugs. Actionable PGX variants are very common. Clinical guidance are available and supported by peer-reviewed clinical guidelines, FDA product label recommendations, and the likes of CPIC. We're also now seeing expanding insurance coverage and reimbursement through Medicare, Medicaid, as well as many commercial payers. So in conclusion, there are numerous benefits when incorporating pharmacogenomics into your practice. 
namely that personalized medicine leads to better personalized treatment plans. It's cost effective. It improves medication response with less trial and error, thereby reducing adverse drug events with the ultimate goal being the right medication in the right dosage for the right patient the first time. The testing is very simple and it doesn't take much time at all. You swab the inside of the cheek with the enclosed cotton tip swab, mail the swab sample back to our lab in the prepaid envelope provided to you, and within just a couple of weeks, you'll receive the customized report along with recommendations prepared just for your patient. It's that easy. It's time to bring genetic testing into your practice. To get started or for more information, contact us at info at cygenics.com or call 888-232-7761. Your patients are waiting for you. And now's the time to incorporate genetics into your practice. Cygenics, we put precision in precision medicine.